nightmares, memories that won't escape you, betrayal by those closest to you. Do you learn to accept those nightmares and push through them? Not a soul you can trust, not a voice that can be heard, just the vacuum of space to beckon with your thoughts. Then, one day, a voice, a reassuring one, a voice to make all of those nightmares go away and heal you. No, not heal you, a voice to make you stronger than ever before. Do you listen to this voice, or do you keep withering in defeat and loneliness? The end of destiny. How is it happening, and who is causing it? How deep does the nightmare go? Wait, this is a destiny video? Let me put you in the scenario. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. Also some footage, Evan F 1997 live on Twitch. Come watch me play or throw me out in the background while you play games. I stream every day. Oh, uh, hello. <clears throat> Sorry about that. When you sit in front of a screen gaming, writing, recording, streaming, and role-playing as callous, your eyes tend to hurt. You know the experience. I mean, come on, you're watching a Destiny video right now. We grind like hell in front of a screen. Coming home from work, school, and then boom, you're in front of another screen. I bet you're watching this video without these bad boys on. Blue light is the enemy coming from our monitors. It's hurting your eyes when you look at it for a prolonged period of time. GMG Performance is back with us today to save you from the blue light raid boss. GMG glasses don't look like a yellow plate in front of your eyes either. Here, uh, take a take a look. Can you can you see that? Nothing. No, no yellow. And that's because they're clear and transparent. They're stylish. They're comfortable. They just mm, they just get it. You see me rocking these on stream all the time for a reason, and I wouldn't be telling you guys about them if there wasn't that reason too. I wouldn't be wearing them if there wasn't that reason that I like this company. 48 hours, no more, no less. You have the chance at 40% off GMG Performance glasses. That is not a bad deal at all. Click the link in the description or in the comments. And now back to the video. Destiny dungeons are a staple to the franchise ever since being introduced with the Shattered Throne all the way back in 2018. A dungeon takes the stakes of a raid and lowers the team from 6 players to 3 players needing to solve puzzles, conquer bosses, and reap the loot to win. Dungeons are all aesthetically different from one another and offer a quality boost from the main game experience in almost every single way. You can ask 10 players if they prefer a dungeon to anything else in Destiny, and most of the time you'll hear a yes. I love raiding in Destiny too. I love not having time to explain why I don't have time to explain. I like to drag my balls across everybody's face in Gambit! <gasps> okay, so it's usually a raid or a dungeon, but the point is, they're a big deal for the franchise. Dungeons offer less stakes, which means you need less friends to help you on your journey to the final chest. But in my experience, dungeons are the most satisfying activity to farm loot from. Oh yeah, that's something else entirely. Dungeon-specific loot. It hasn't always been perfect in the dungeons, but now it's guaranteed with a full set of dungeon armor and weaponry to rock. Bungie puts a lot of time into ensuring that everyone has fun in these dungeons and they're meticulously designed for a three-player experience with a solo cosmetic reward for true mastery. Now in Season of the Haunted, it has been five months since the last dungeon. The Grasp of Avarice was released. This season is the continuation of the gaps the Destiny community so desperately wanted to fill, with the feel of the game being that it was too stale post-Witch Queen. Players were hungry for something new to sink their teeth into, in the Season of the Haunted, the Leviathan beckons players to return to it and solve its mysteries. PvP players can finally stop touching grass. Well, eh, you know. And for the dungeon players, well, we're here today to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to subscribe, 
drop a like, and finally a comment on why this dungeon stands out to you. Because today, we dive head into duality. Duality begins in a Destiny player familiar territory, the Tribute Hall. Ah yes, this lovable testing ground of every weapon and every build in the game, which was the only testing ground for this, is back, except for the testing part. Damn, Eris, you've been doing some freaky shit in here. Eris, you know, that lovable... Well, Eris is here, and she gives you that initiative of going inside the big thick man's mind. Yeah, that's right. This dungeon is actually Inception and Stranger Things. Yeah, you could say there's a lot of reused assets, but this is Destiny, and we wear reused content on our sleeves. I don't care if something is reused as long as it's in a cool way, and Duality does a lot of this so well. Players start out with a brand new mechanic that is not moats in a dungeon. Prophecy and Grasp of Avarice both had a collect moat-like mechanic. And finally, and I mean finally, this one introduces something new with the bell. The bell is like the briefcase in Inception, transporting the player into the nightmare that is Callus's mind. Eris gives her speech, and we're in. The opening is about what you'd expect, a nice intro to the mechanics of the dungeon with some neat platforming for the aesthetic. Callus narrates this dungeon as echoes of his own nightmares, and it's amazing. Some of the best voice acting Darren DePaul has ever done. Ah, Exus is the mighty goal to great a coward to kneel down and take my head from my shoulders. One portion of the dungeon nobody seems to admire is the collectibles that tell the story of the place. Callus has a tragic tale throughout these with a very believable ending. As believable as a space turtle really can be. I want you to be in the scenario. Imagine you've just fought to take over a corrupt military elite government. And as a reward to your people, you want to shower everyone down with gold and glory. Uniting every person from every walk of life. Callus was this overthrower and he tried to be this ruler. But not everyone liked that about him. Callus trusted Gaul, you know, the dumpster fire year of Destiny 2, like he was a son. Gaul, with all of the fucking phalanxes, exiled Callus to the Leviathan. The only thing that Callus cared more about than anything, and his driving motivation for his people, was his daughter, Keitel. The daughter that has a giant grip on Zavala's cabals. He even reassures us of that with his words about conquest. My daughter will grow up knowing only celebration, triumph, and peace. This is the world I made. The bell mechanic is a tricky one at first, but I like that it tries something new for the game. The bell lets you shoot it from anywhere in the room and it teleports the player into the nightmare realm or the interpretation the dark side of Callus's thoughts. Once in this realm, some things are different. Platforms aren't where they were before. Some entrances aren't where they were before either. It's kind of a nice maze to run through. Once in this realm, you can't just shoot the bell again from any distance, or you'll die. You need to be close. There's some variations to this we'll get to, but this is cool. It's not moats. Now we get to something a little more familiar, Galron. What? You thought this was just gonna have the Tribute Hall reintroduced? Well, this is Destiny, and this is what we do! But is it good? Well... If you could just see the clip of what just happened. Shoot! Huge damage! What? I'm done. I'm out of here. Galron was an example of Callus's era of ruling and lends to why those closest to him would want him overthrown. Galron was made in the Bass of the Leviathan and raised to wear the Crown of Sorrow, a helmet that was supposed to give the bearer the ability to command all the hive. 
The problem is Savathun, the queen moth of getting clapped, but also the queen of tricks. Callus opens up more about this and starts to unravel the mystery of this place. Savathun, Savathun, she knew he had me. Had I not birthed Galra, had he not donned the crown, I would be lost. The voice warned me of her, but I did not heed it, and the voice is so silent now. You see, after Callus was exiled, he had a lot of time to think, and a lot of time to decide if he should be angry or self-reflect on his mistakes. Deep at the edge of the world, he was approached by a voice, a voice that guided him and reassured him that he was the true ruler of all, and they would all meet his end. The one time he didn't listen to the voice was with Galron and Savathun. Callus does need some therapy for his Galron problem, and my Thunder Crash is the road to recovery. So it's time we talk about the first encounter. The Nightmare of Galron takes that bell mechanic and gives it the pull and twist. In the Nightmare Realm, there is two rooms with Scions to kill and buffs to drop on the ground. After killing both of them, dunking in the normal realm and then getting set in the doors, the obstacle then becomes those annoying fucking bell keepers. Seriously, fuck these guys. They always boot me into walls, they always mess with my runs, and they're always in the worst spot possible. You know what? Give me a gamer subs, and I'm flying the fuck in. Code Evan at checkout. After the trash is taken out, hop in the rooms and you dunk the buff. Shoot the bell and run trains like it's COD zombies with Galrons. After clearing out the last crawler, it's damage time. Rinse, repeat, win, profit. Hi. GG. What's up, boys? One phase, baby! Woo! Let's go, dude. You know what makes raids and dungeons special? The downtime. The loot! Well, yeah, that's a given, but the downtime after you beat an encounter has some of the best moments, and I love how Bungie always finds a way to strike a balance in the process. Right after sweating your balls off, beating a boss with one second left to go, the sweet relief isn't just the loot, it's also the exploration to the next place. In duality, these next sections are slides. They're platforms and a graveyard of crypts along the walls, which we step all over to get our loot. This is where Callus also grieves about his betrayers, saying he would have died with them here, but after the exile and the coup, saying that he now looks at what's inside these crypts as materials. No one of honor will be interred here. The dead are raw materials and nothing more. After landing in the next room, Callus says that history was made there, and seeing how it looks a lot like the Menagerie's entrance, I think he's right. You see, a long time ago, after Destiny players blew up Gaul, Callus returned and invited us to the Leviathan, then to do his chores in Eater of Worlds, Spire of Stars, and the Menagerie. For what purpose? We'll get to that later. Hey guys, did you know that the Menagerie also has a Vault Encounter? Welcome to Niobe Labs, Morbius Edition. This is the inner thoughts of Callus's brain, and this is sort of puzzly. I say sort of because these statues are the only part of a puzzle. Shoot the bell to go into the Nightmare, turn the notches so they face the same way as the normal realm, then enter the Chamber of Secrets. Once down the hole, a race against the clock takes over where you need to find the matching symbol sides to dunk the buff into. I like how the symbols aren't just given away. I mean, they mostly are, but I like the subtle hints like a dog statue for the dog side and axes on the wall for the axe side. After killing more bell bearers with the giant girth of my titan, the bell could be rung and three rounds of mini bosses ensued. I like this encounter because it reminded me of the opening scene of Inception. I really felt like the race against the clock to get out of the nightmare was on. 
and I was waiting for someone to kick me into some water. Don't even think about kicking me into some water. Another small detail I'd like to imagine is intentional is the mini bosses you fight in the vault all being members of the coup against Kallus. They're majors under the command of different cabal generals of the coup, just defenders of even more messed up memories locked away in Kallus' mind vault. Speaking of that, after three rounds in here, getting the correct sides and defeating more repressed memories with Freudianism, it's time to find out what was truly locked away in the vault. Oh, yeah. loot. Oh, come on, please. Dude! What'd you get? Gloves again! <laughs> what is the one nightmare that could drive someone with the last remaining piece of humanity to the breaking point? What is the one thing stopping one from letting go? From being embraced by evil? She's more beautiful than any star I have ever beheld. I name her Kaito, for the brightest star in our sky. May she outshine it always. Callus raised Kaito to walk in his footsteps believing that she could be by his side and rule the entire world, thinking that she shared the same beliefs, but she didn't. Keitel is the daughter of Callus, but she always hated her father. Their relationship is explained a lot in the lore of the weapons, but the most important piece of it is in the exotic sword, which tells the tale of how Callus's form of communicating with his daughter was so poor that by the latter days, he would send assassins with this sword to try and kill her, knowing they would fail and she would send the sword back broken. This was how far he would go to see if his daughter was still alive, and it's as messed up as you're thinking it is. Gaul may have been the son who betrayed Callus, the son that Callus never had, but Keitel? Keitel was the only thing that Callus truly loved above all else. In the Midnight Coup, Gaul would have killed Callus. Instead, Keitel was the one who wanted Callus exiled, maybe as one final mercy to her father. I am as you made me, and I would kill you were it my choice. But it is not. Keitel stayed my blade. Remember that. And deep at the end of the locked memory is our final boss. Keitel may be an ally to Destiny players and a little too close of an ally to Bald Man in the tower for there to not be a 34 attached to them, but she is the saddest nightmare of Callus. You can hear it in his voice when you enter the fight. My daughter, my star. Keitel's fight is no joke. Not for the mechanics, no. For the amount of fucking bell keepers! Oh, and now they got scions too? Someone hold me. I'm butt chugging a gamer subs and morbin on them. This room is mirrored to the Leviathan's callous encounter for four symbols to dunk, but two symbols at a time. Once all four scions are dead in the nightmare and the bell in the middle has dropped, Keitel can take damage. This one took a while to figure out and has some pretty needed timing or else you're getting stuck here not doing damage to Keitel and she teleports away. The other feature that wasn't really well explained is that you need to get over to the bells themselves to get the buff to do actual damage or else you're hitting her with a wet Kleenex from someone who just got done watching that Keitel Zavala 34. Like I said, this wasn't easy and I can appreciate good enemy density. It looked like an EDM concert with how many flashing lasers and lights were butt to chest with each other. After this, that's it, and Eris pulls you out of the nightmare, giving you a kick to the dick one last time. Oh, man. Oh, we're back. <gasps> Yo, I got that linear! What? You got the I got linear? the linear. This may be the end to the duality dungeon, but it's definitely not the end of Callus. If anything, we have only seen the beginning of his wrath, 
because in his own words, The promised end is at hand, as worlds are swallowed into nothing, and I, I hear nothing. Excruciating silence. Perhaps I have displeased it. Or perhaps I am not listening hard enough. Callus's voice was not in his own head. Callus's voice was that of the witness, the Mega Mind villain coming right after us. It makes so much sense now why the Witness stopped communicating with Callus when he talked to Savathun. The Witness hates Savathun. It makes so much sense why Callus was able to fall into the Witness's trap. Callus lost everything, his empire, and his own daughter. And now it makes even more sense for Callus to be our end, the end of our destiny. I have reached the limits of what this crumbling body can offer, and yet there is so much more that I must do. I must shed my remaining attachments to this flesh and ascend. The others have, and a path is laid before me. There is fear in this. Fear of losing myself. But there is no other way. I must prove my loyalty or wither. To understand the final shape, I must become more than myself. Lightfall is coming, and it needs an antagonist. Wouldn't Callus be perfect for that? Destiny's Thanos with even bigger cheeks to clap down on us is a disciple of the Witness. And with Keitel at our side, he's coming back to have his revenge on his daughter and the universe. He won't be himself. He will be controlled by the Witness. I hope you're ready. Let's get out of story mode and go into loot mode. The loot in this dungeon just slaps. There's a classic Mario review of something for everyone. There's a new type of weapon in the linear fusion rifle. There's new perks. There's new origin traits. And there's something new soiling my pants looking at these. There's an exotic sword that I can't wait to get one day and everything is farmable. On the other hand, there's the armor, which you know, perfect. The armor can look sweet, but it takes too many steps and doesn't look to fit this dungeon at all, no matter how hard they try to force it into the lore. Look, I don't want to be a cynical ass here, but when your season pass armor looks like this and fits the nightmare aesthetic, and then your dungeon armor looks like that, I think you got to be called out on that kind of BS. I don't know why I said it like that. I think time will also look fondly on the loot here, since you can farm this dungeon at any time for any drop you want. There's no lockouts and every weapon is nice on its own, even those reprised menagerie guns. Do you want my advice? Throw on a stream in the background and grind the dungeon final boss for the linear. It just slaps. Also, you should watch my stream. Artifice armor is cool as always, but Master this time around seems so much harder that I don't know how much I want to get it, especially for hockey armor. The loot is a major W, just overall great. I think that my personal favorite part of it all is that you can just keep farming and turn off your brain. In previous dungeons, farming got old because encounters could be a chore, but no encounter is bad in this dungeon. They all just work. For my critique of this dungeon, I don't really have a lot to say, and I wonder why I even wrote this section. It has been four full days since launch, but here we are, and we're going to keep going. I think this is my second favorite dungeon off the rip. Shattered Throne being my favorite Bungie has ever made since it was a massive surprise, and still feels so grand scaling a tower. But given some time, I think this may top it. This dungeon just doesn't waste your time with boring long phases. 
This dungeon lets you test your builds without forcing you to use one or another. The enemy density is high, and the story is incredible. Again, ask me in a month which dungeon I like the most, and it may change. But for now, this one is amazing across the board, and I could listen to Callus narrate me a bedtime story whenever he wanted to. As far as my negatives, I would say that the mechanics aren't always explained well, like the Keitel Bell mechanic to do damage, and the vault statues just kind of being there. I think these statues feel so out of place to never be used again. I was really hoping for something more puzzly like these statues since it was a great concept moving them in the Nightmare Realm and seeing how they moved in the normal game. I want Bungie to try this mechanic again outside of this activity and expand on it. I think people would really like it. I see a lot of people complaining about mechanics being too similar with the bell, but like every other dungeon and raid does this too, so I don't know what you expected. How many activities do you dunk a ball, stand on a plate, or collect moats? Yeah, that's what I thought. This dungeon is also buggy as hell at times with Bungie even confirming some serious game-breaking bugs. And I can tell you, I have wiped on boss kill runs to the bell randomly going off, but those will be fixed. You can't fix a Healthgate boring fight to farm, but you can sure as shit fix some bugs. Or in Bungie's case, you can create more bugs by fixing one. Overall, I think the dungeon will stand the test of time well, and we will be talking about the quality of it for a while. Get ready for the final shape and the lightfall gamers because the big man is coming for his revenge to end destiny. Like, subscribe, keep being handsome and beautiful. I appreciate all of you for watching this video, and I think that I wanna just keep making better content. I know it's everyone's goal, but we've been trying out some different games and I like the variety. I'm happy to be back making destiny content, but I wanna keep pushing the boundaries of what we can do. Thank you everyone, make sure you turn the bell on so that you never miss a notification, and enjoy some bloopers. Get the fuck out of here. Sent this up. Off hammer damage, it does. So we need sun. What? What was that? Huh? Wait, a time out. Guys! Guys! Hello! Yes, Clyde, look up! Set up! What are you doing out there, buddy? Dude! What? As a I literally can't hear him. Bro! <laughs> Holy no! Oh my god! I have the death cam. What? <laughs> What's he doing what? out there? What is going on?